That individual that strives, who strives for the hajat of his fellow Muslim brother, is more better than doing 10 years of i'tikaf. Look at the Sharia. Look, you know how this whole scam running, Sharia law, Sharia law. Allah ki qasam, that's a major sin. Did I ever think of this? It, babe, the problem is with people, not with the religion. We neither showed it, practiced it, nothing. So then we are qusur wariyar, we are the ones who are full. Respect to the non brothers and elders. Allah wa ta'ala gave us deen of Islam and in within the deen of Islam we have five particular branches. There are five branches within the deen, okay? Number one is aqaid, our beliefs. Number two is ibadah. Number three is our mu'amalat, our dealings, mu'ashra or the mu'ashrat, number four. And number five is our akhlaq. We, alhamdulillah, as being Muslims, we've already entered into branch one. We're about to do branch number two. Mu'amalat, mu'ashrat, mu'ashrat, and also akhlaq. These are three things which are in relation to the people. You have hukukul and hukukul ibad. These last three, your mu'amalat, your dealings with people, your business transactions and so on. Then your mu'ashrat, your social interactions. Social interactions. How do you live amongst people? And last but not least, our akhlaq. Abu Dhar Ghifari radiallahu anhu, Abu Dhar Ghifari, Sahabi of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, there's a long lengthy hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was encouraging him to do a number of good deeds. He said, do this, do this, do this, and he gave a number of good deeds that he was supposed to do or could do. And then he radiallahu anhu, Abu Dhar Ghifari then said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulallah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in ra'id, tell me something, in da'uftu an ba'dil amal, what if what you're telling me, I can't do? Madlab ke, you're saying, do this, do this, do this, and what if I can't do it? What if I'm weak to do it? What should I do then? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned one jumla, one sentence. He mentioned, takuffu sharrak anin nas. تَكُفُّ شَرَّكَ عَنِ النَّاسِ فَإِنَّهَا صَدَقَةٌ مِّنْكَ وَعَلَى نَفْسِكَ صَدَقَةٌ مِّنْكَ عَلَى نَفْسِكَ He صلى الله عليه وسلم, he, when he said you should do this deed, this ye neki karo, this neki, this neki, this deed, and he told him to do a number of things, but he said, what if I can't do it? مَا مَيْكَمْ زُورُ كَيَا كَرُوْ So he said, fine, do this, تَكُفُّ شَرَّكَ عَنِ النَّاسِ أَبْنِ شَرْكُ لُوْغُ سَي بَجْ Keep yourself, yourself, your evil self, meaning the negative self, the things that you do wrong, harm, anything like that, safe from people. Meaning keep people safe from your sharr. If you can't do so many good deeds, if you can't do so much good, the minimum should be you don't cause harm to another person. This much will be beneficial, is that it will be a sadaqah and a reward for yourself, for on yourself. Now this is one usul ulama mentioned, this is a very big principle within the deen. If you can't do so much good, by guna na karo, don't sin. If a person, mashallah, is praying salah and all these sadaqat and mashallah, doing lots of ibadah, lots of ibadah, but at the same time that person does guna and does sin, he's not as good as that person that does small amal, small, but he doesn't do no harm and he doesn't harm people. His sins are relatively less, much less. He's better than the two. So it's not about, okay, chalo, like one guy, one Muazzin, you know Muazzin? He was caught going, coming out of a cinema. Now obviously in our countries, you know, it's kind of a, it's, especially in Hindu-Pak subcontinent, when you, if you see someone coming out of a, a cinema, it kind of looks a bit aib. So someone said to him, Ya astaghfirullah, Hazrat, Huzur, what are you doing here? Aap kya kar rahe, bhai? What are you coming out of the cinema? He goes, bhai, dekhe, par la zara barabar barabar rakhna chahiye. I need to keep the balance a bit braber. So I do some of this and do some of this as well. But this isn't, you know, Allah ma'af for me, koi mazak nahi hai. You know, what do you mean I need to do some of this and some of this? If Allah is giving you that sharaf and that mansab and that status, that maqam and that izza, alhamdulillah, doesn't mean you can, you can do something sin like the otherwise and oh, it's okay. No. If Allah gave you tawfiq, you should try and strive to reduce your sins even more. But anyway, the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, this hadith is found in Sahih Muslim, 2699, lengthy hadith. But it's big. I want to focus on this one part. Taqufu sharrak anin nas. Khalas, that's all I want to talk about. Apne sharko dusun se bachaye. Keep your sharr, your evil to yourself, safeguard other people. That's the khulasa of the hadith. And this is some very, very big usul. Now, 
Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu, one person came into Masjid al-Nabawi and he saw him radiallahu anhu, Abdullah bin Abbas, he's the cousin of the Prophet and he's doing i'tikaf. The person was very ghamdeen, very upset, very down, very kind of dukhi and the, Abdullah bin Abbas said to him, okay, what's the matter? Uh, you look a bit sad. He said, O oh, cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I, in, and I'm, I'm just going to cut the chase, he, he mentioned that I'm, I'm financially burdened. Other, another person has a haqq over me. So what happened was, he said, should I not, should I not go and in, uh, speak to the person on your behalf? Should I not go and speak? Who's saying this? Abdullah bin Abbas. What's he doing? He's in Atikaf and he's in Masjid al-Nabawi. So he says, should I not go and speak to the person on your behalf? So he said, aren't you in sadaqah? I mean, oh, sorry, aren't you in i'tikaf? Aren't you, aren't you, you know, in seclusion for 10 days? And then he then started, sh- he, he then said, by qareeb zamana, it's just re- in the recent past, I heard the sahib of this qabr, meaning he's pointing towards the grave of the Prophet Wasallam, saying, this person buried here, I heard him say. And while he's saying this, he's Tears in his eyes. He's thinking of that zamana when the Prophet used to be with the Sahaba and it moved him emotionally. So he turned around and said, I remember a time when this person in the grave, he mentioned the following thing and the hadith is wonderful. He mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man Masha fi hajati akhihi. That individual that strives, who strives for the hajat of his fellow Muslim brother. Kana khayral lahu. It is more better for him than what? Man i'tika fi ashri sinin. It's more better than doing 10 years of i'tikaf. By someone who says that if any Muslim is doing a good job, then this is a good job from 10 It's better than 10 years of i'tikaf. And then he mentions, he goes and further says, وَمَنْ اِعْتَكَفَ يَوْمًا When that individual who does one day i'tikaf, اِبْدِغَاءَ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ Not for name, not for fame, not for show, not for wahwa, solely اِبْدِغَاءَ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, جَعَلَ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ النَّارِ ثَلَاثَ خَنَادِقِ ثَلَاثَ خَنَادِقِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make three khandaks between this individual and the fire of Jahannam. Every khandak, the hadith is still carrying on. Kullu khandak ab'ad mimma bayn al khafiqin. The space between the east and the west, mashriq and maghrib, this whole space is one khandak. One. If that person who does i'tikaf one day for Allah's sake, one day, ibtigha'a wajhillah, khalis for Allah's sake, this individual will be given three khandaks away from the fire of Jahannam. And that shaks who fulfills the haq and the hajat of his fellow Muslim brother, what will he get? 10 years i'tikaf. What am I trying to say? When we, our understanding is what? Okay, mashallah, look, deen dari, he's doing i'tikaf, alhamdulillah. But he's saying this has its own maqam. Me doing i'tikaf, me doing ibadah has its own maqam. But fulfilling a haq of a fellow Muslim brother is more beloved, more better than this. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was looking at the Kaaba and Baytullah and he mentioned ma atiyabuk wa atiyabu rihik wa a'zamu hurmatak. Hadith mentions, he said, how beautiful you are, how pure you are and how the, the fragrance and comes off you is so wonderful and beautiful. But he mentions wal mu'minu a'zamu hurmatan mink. But he, goes, he mentioned, I swear, one mu'min, one believer is more bait, better in status than you, O Kaaba. Abu sallallahu was addressing the Kaaba. The, the Kaaba has no comparison in relation to a Muslim. You know when we have sometimes these musallas and they have a picture on the Kaaba, on them, and if someone's footsteps on it, oh, astaghfirullah, the whole house goes barjhan. He, 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 he put his foot on the Kaaba. But the Kaaba Torah is a thread. It's daga. You know, but we, have, we associate something with it because it's the picture of the Kaaba. Nabi is directly addressing the Kaaba. Ma atiyabuk, you are pure. Your, what, your, your, your fragrance is beautiful. You are so bland in maqam. But wallah, you have no maqam in comparison to one Muslim. But yeah, this is the value of you and I. So this is why Rasulullah mentioned to Abu Dhar Ghifari, if you can't do so many good deeds, bhai, kam se kam do this, ke apna shark logo se bajaye. But this much we should try to do. If I can't do so many good deeds, don't be a parasite. Don't do guna, don't do sin. And this is why, subhanAllah, there are some benefits for this as well. What you may ask, I, I know it's a no-brainer for a Muslim. We don't want to hurt people and sin against people. But it's sometimes good to mention some fazail as well. 
But there are some benefits for this as well. When you are cautious of huquq al-ibad, when you keep your sharr away from people, there are some additional benefits to that. Number one, most definitely, you will be safeguarded from major sins. You will be safeguarded from major sins. Even if you were to swear at someone in the wrong way, if you were to say something in the wrong way, if you were to do something to someone else which caused them barshani, upset, duk, this as well is even a major sin. Some, you know, even mentions that if we're making wudu even, look at the sharia, look, you know how this whole scaremongering, sharia law, sharia law. But what is the sharia exactly? These small things, we are all part of the sharia. One person is making wudu, if I'm going and spitting and blowing my nose on the person left and right, and Uncle Ginori, they're feeling disgusting. Allah ki qasam, that's a major sin. Did I ever think of this? But that's what the Sharia proposes. Which, if, if, if Deen is teaching this, how can it then allow the rights of other people to become destroyed? How? It's, it, babe, the problem is with people, not with the religion. The problem is with, with, with the people who try to implement it, not with the word of Allah, not with the word of Rasulullah. It's our problem. We don't understand it as Sayyidina. We don't understand it, we We neither showed it, practiced it, nothing. So then we are the Qusur Wariyar, we are the ones who are at fault. Not the deen. Alhamdulillah. But you will safeguard yourself from major sin. Number two, you will safeguard yourself from the azab of Jahannam. And number three, you will stop stopping the urge to harm someone. What did he say? Takufu sharak anin nas. You want to respond, you want to tell someone how you feel, you want to say something to them, you resist the urge. Wallah, that resisting of the urge, even that will earn you ajr in the court of Allah. Apne aapko rokna, ye bhi ajr hai. This is even ajr itself. So our deen, alhamdulillah, is not this kind of, I know there are five branches, aqaid, you know, ibadah, mu'amalat, mu'ashira, akhlaq. We regard the first two as deen. So he says he's a Muslim, he prays a bit of namaz, mashallah. No, that's the starting, brother. That's the starting. When you got your, you know, these are just the bunyad, the very basic branches of deen. Okay, and this is why, subhanAllah, we need to have this discourse as much as possible. Time is running out. You know, we hear often in the, in the khutbah, in the khutbah of Jum'ah, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَةِ وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغْءِ Yaar, how many Jum'ahs have we heard this for? I mean, I say it every week. And you'll hear most khutbah say it. Maybe you've heard it for 10 years, that's 500 Jum'ahs. Times that by some people who are 50, 60, they've heard it 250, how many hundred times have heard it? Kabi, did we ever think? Actually, what one, if you're here listening to it 50 times a week, in, in 50 years, that's like 2,500 times. Did, was there ever a justuju? Was there ever an effort to think, what is Allah trying to tell me in this verse? There's no shock, Allahu Akbar. But I'll tell you quickly. In Allah ya'muru bil adl. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order you? Bil adl, justice. Number one thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders is justice. Number two, ihsan. What is ihsan? Good behavior. Good behavior towards other people. Muhsineen, Allah loves these individuals. In Allah ya'muru bil adl wal ihsan wa ita'i dil qurba. Giving to your close relations. He give, and these are three things which he mentions. Giving what to relations? What? By their huquq. Their rights. And what does he forbid us to do? And then he mentions that وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرْ وَالْبَغْءِ Fahsha is basically immorality, lewdness, shameful acts. Munkar, evil deeds. Evil deeds. And baghi, zulm, oppression on other people. And he mentions يَعِذُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكِّرُونَ Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention this? But he's telling us, so we take heed and learn from this. This is why Allah But the fact is that we've heard it how many hundreds of times, we've never taken heed, we've never thought, never listened, never discussed, nothing, subhanAllah. This is why, my dear brother, it's very important as an ummah, we look at these things. Adil is what? Adil doesn't just mean just, it, it, it's not just one-sided, between that person and his, his Rabb, on, between himself and all of creation, Adil on himself, between you that you do moderation in every single thing, this is Adil. And in just completion, what is Ihsan exactly? Ihsan basically are actions and habits to a perfection. That's Ihsan. Meaning that your dealings with others should be impeccable. Your dealings with animals even should also be impeccable. No zulm should be done. And also in addition to that as well, is that you should give someone more than their haq. That is Ihsan. 
Did we ever think to even stop about these verses? Ita'idil qurba, that's a whole separate bayan. I'll just mention this much. Fulfilling the haq and the rights of our relative, this comes under a whole bayan of Silatul Rahim, which we'll cover on another subject, inshallah. But in khulasa, taqufu sharrak anin nas. What did the Prophet say? If you can't do so many good deeds, just keep your shar away from people. This is sufficient for us. Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq, inshallah. Subhanallah, we have this. Subhanakallah.